annual Eleanor Rose Pageant. Before I get started with the program, and everybody's got lots of people to talk, we want to thank the El Dorado County Fair, and Dee is one of the board of directors. We want to thank the fair and the staff for all of these years for giving us a place to have our pageant. It's been over four decades, and we thank the fair so very, very much. <laughs> those of you who aren't familiar with me, I think most of you are, but I'm Dolores Wadsworth, and I was privileged to be the 2013 Eldorado Rose. And I can't tell you what a privilege it was to be the hostess of the county for a year. And tonight, we're going to be welcoming two more ladies. One's going to be Rose, and one's going to be the Rose Court. All, we're all equal, and we're going to have two more ladies that are going to be in our garden, in our Rose Garden. But now I'd like to introduce you to our distinguished and absolutely delightful Master of Ceremonies. He's our retired Sheriff of Eldorado County, Mr. Hal Walker. service at that. 
So the qualifications to become an El Dorado Rose is one, the lady must be at least 60 years of age, have lived in El Dorado County for 10 years. She must know somewhat of our history of this county, which is a very rich history. And she must have accumulated years and years and years of volunteer service to her community. The lady is then sponsored by either a club, an organization, a business, or even a private individual to sponsor a lady that they feel is deserving of this award. So when she is sponsored, her sponsoring organization throws a reception for her. Then in mid-May, we have the El Dorado Grand Ball, the Rose Ball. And this is when the candidates are presented to the community. After that, it's that first week of the fair, which was this past Monday, when our two ladies had to come and be judged. Now, a lady can wear a original vintage outfit if she has one, or she can do a reproduction. Tonight, both of our ladies are wearing vintage outfits. So that Monday, we come to the fair. They're sitting in their, their special outfit, which no one else has seen. And then they go before a panel of five judges who are going to ask them a little bit about the history of this county. And after they go through that, then they go into another room and they speak with uh, two ladies that are judging them on their costume. Then the total amount is about 100 points. The judges all get together, they tally up the points, but they don't tell us. It's a big secret. And so tonight, at the end of this program, we're all going to know which one of these ladies is going to be the next El Dorado Rose. Next, we're going to ask Carol McLaughlin, our 2017 El Dorado Rose, to talk. She started her year last year and has a very and is a very active lady who's had a very active year that I think ought to work on. Extravagant hats with feathered lace and ribbon. 
However, these were worn at the end of the era. Bonnets were widely in style in the beginning of the era. <laughs> Bonnets were widely worn at the beginning of the era, and they were favored because of they had this very wide brim, and it shaded the lady's lovely face. But as time went on, parasols became more fashionable, and bonnets were no longer in favor. Robert, Robert headgear was required socially, and as we just saw with the royal wedding, everyone was required to wear a hat to that wedding. But back in the Victorian era, the hats were large to accommodate masses of feathers, floral trim, for the paradise, and by the 1890s, women were wearing whole bodies of birds on their hats. <laughs> Running parallel to these hat-making arts were feather workshops, are correctly called plumasiers, where feathers were dyed and made into arrangements. Plumes have always been a status symbol and sign of economic stability. It was during this time that the Audubon Society was formed, in which whole species of birds were saved from becoming extinct. The creativity of the milliners saw no boundaries with hats made of taffeta, silk bows, flowers, artificial fruit, bird feathers, and in some cases whole stuffed birds. To secure these huge creations to the head, hat pins, some as long as 18 inches, were skewered through hair and hat. The more elaborate the hat, the more pins it required. Besides being both functional and beautiful, Hat pins also were very controversial. And it was feared in 1908 that the suffragettes would use these pins as weapons. So a law was passed that they could only be nine inches long. If a lady was caught wearing one longer than that, she was fined one dollar. Today that would be $24. I think it would probably still be more. At the turn of the 20th century, women's role in society was changing. They were able to ride bicycles, and they even had jobs in offices. By 1913, hats were becoming smaller and less elaborate. Enormous plumes and stuffed birds had fallen out of vogue. Smaller brims foreshadowed the slow shaft of the 1920s. Now I'd like to show you some of the many hats that are being worn by our own beautiful roses. First, we have Mrs. Michael Metz. And she's wearing an original 1890s traveling suit. The skirt is silk taffeta and pink with black. Velvet trim and an overskirt of cotton lace for the bustle with a back boat closure. It has a bone silk velvet jacket and burgundy with pink and black trim and hooks asymmetrically in the front. The hat is a white brim of black with velvet with the same trim as the suit, and a fur, and extra plumes, and antique hat pin. You may recall from last year that Miss Metz had a bit of a drinking problem. <laughs> her husband is sending her by train from Springfield to Chicago. We believe she may be staying at the sanatorium there. Next, Mrs. Don Young is wearing a visiting suit. It is brocade pink silk. Her hat is wool felt, trimmed in beautiful velvet flowers. We have heard that the widow Young may be busy with Mr. Metz while the missus is away. <laughs> and you may be wondering why I'm calling them Mrs so-and-so by their husband's name. And that is because women of this era were their husband's property. And we were supposed to behave accordingly. <laughs> Mrs. Albert Walterby is wearing a lovely rose-colored dress. Her hat is a very beautiful crocheted rose-colored hat with a white enough rim to shade a pretty face at a garden party or as she strolls down Main Street. Antique rose satin ribbon encircles the crown of the hat, ending in a lovely demure bow. The hat is hand crocheted, double crocheted, triple crocheted, and has a chain stitch. 
It was worn in the 1890s. Mrs. Wolfrey can often meet her husband where they will be attending a tea dance. <laughs> Mrs. Perry Harper is wearing a lightweight cotton dress with puffy sleeves, gathered skirt, and a fitted bodice. She's wearing a lightweight straw hat that is brimming over with flowers. She's going to the meeting of the Hangtown Guard Club, where she is currently the president. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Robert Burnley is wearing a dimpled day skirt and blouse. Her hat is silk and velvet. The brim has embroidered roses and a peekaboo rose underneath the brim. And on the top of the brim, it is covered in silk fleece. Mrs. Burnley will be attending church right out of the <laughs> This is George Meter, is wearing a simple skirt and loud. Her hat is called a voter. It's straw and it's covered in gimp lace. Mrs. Meter is off to join the suffragette. It's about time women got the vote. Thank you, Mrs. Meter. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Mrs. John Stockel is wearing a lovely pink skirt and a pretty blouse. Her hat is silk with a beautiful ornate hat pin. She is a lady of great means. You see, she's ready to board the Titanic. Go play odds, Mrs. Stockel. Now you can see why all of our roses have had it too. Come on, lady.
fine looking ladies. Got them all in. Now to focus on the selection of the 2018 Eldorado Rose. First candidate is Diane Lear. <laughs> Diane is a lovely transplant to our county. She always dreamed of being a country girl, and that dream came true when Diane and her husband moved to Eldorado County in 2003. She's married. The mother of a son and daughter, and she's also a doting grandmother. Animals have always been her passion, from the plastic ones she collected as a child to the ones she cares for today. She's been a volunteer for our Happy Trails Pink Pet Sanctuary, El Dorado Humane Society, and is still volunteering for Sierra Wildlife. She's also done some volunteering for humans, too. Currently active in the Gold Country Herb Society, El Dorado Community Center, and the American Legion. Since moving here, she has immersed herself in the activities of the county. Diane is wearing an original antique dress. It's a walking skirt and silk blouse. The blue silk file with cotton inlet and ribbon inserts that has a back silk closure. Her rust-colored silk blouse with beige lace sleeves and trim, and mother of pearl buttons. Her petticoat is also antique white cotton with tucks and inflat trim. She's wearing antique shoes. Her gloves are cream from shade. She's wearing a little rocket. Her shawl, which she didn't bring out because it's too hot, is linen and cotton with a rabbit collar. Her hat is white peacoat, picture half trimmed in silk and feathers and a hat pin. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Our next candidate is Donna Hernandez. Darla was born and raised in Placerville. She started school in a one-room schoolhouse, and she graduated from El Dorado High. She is a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. She's been a docent at the Fountain Talman Museum in Placerville. She's been a member of the Placerville Shakespeare Club since 1996, and a member of the Shakespeare Choral Group since 1997. The group performs during the year at local senior homes and centers. She's a member of Beta Sigma Phi and has worked on many fundraisers with the proceeds going to needy projects in Placerville. She has a loving, lovely singing voice and won first prize in the El Dorado County Fair talent show in 1955 when she was a baby. She loves to cook, play the piano, Throw wonderful tomatoes, cucumbers, and she loves to entertain. Darla is also wearing an original antique dress. This is a day dress circa 1908 skirt and blouse. The fabric of the skirt is long. It has a setting panel in the back. There is a double ruffle on the bottom of the skirt, and it closes with snaps, hooks, and eyes. The fabric of the blouse is also long. It has tucks across the back down the sleeves and across the front. Lace goes around the collar and is sewn on the front of the blouse. The blouse closes with snaps and hooks and eyes. She has an antique white petticoat with lace on the bottom. Her shoes are antique. Her hat is an antique small brim black straw hat. Her jewelry is cameo. Thank you so much, Darla.
trophy for the most authentic costume goes to, where's my black Before I do that, first I have to say, I am not a native El Dorado, and I moved here in 1976, and I have never regretted it one day. I have to, I'm proud of the thousands of hours that you people in the front row have donated to this community, and these ladies up here, and our public servants have made me forever to say I am a proud El Dorado County resident. <laughs> to do that. Onward. And, and again, I have the privilege of doing this, and there are no losers on the stage. Everyone is a winner. And you girls are fabulous. So the best costume, and I would need to be a judge, but the best costume goes to Darla Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you. 